What's up, the internet? Shihiro is back, under the knife. I've been having issues with her, as you guys might recall. And um, I kind of jumped back into it the other day after fixing Charizard and getting some motivation. Had some small successes with some other Toyotas, so I figured the, uh, the vibe was good. Figured it was time to hit her again. Um, went to fire her up. She fired up, surprisingly, because she has intermittently kind of not done that. She fired up. She idled. And then when I put her in her gear after she was warmed up, um, the oil pressure didn't explode the oil filter like it's been doing. And um, I put a Toyota filter in there, by the way. So hopefully that'll that'll solve things rather than that Napa Gold, um, which has never given me troubles before in other trucks. But here we are. So it warmed up. I went to go for a drive. I put it in drive and blah, 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 blah. Immediately. No power. So that told me something was up with probably the carburetor. Some of you guys might recall and some of you might not. So I'll just kind of revamp a little bit here. When I got this truck, they had... Um, they had issues with the motor exploding with oil just like I have I have been and uh, I had the I had the motor rebuilt I, I rebuilt it myself actually I had the machine shop go through it and then I put it together They had also said that they had replaced the fuel pump That was like the one and only thing they really did They replaced the fuel pump to get it running and then immediately had issues and they sold it to me so I've you know been under the expectation of this thing having a, a new fuel pump which it may or may not but also at the very least, if they were going to do that, they're going to go through the trouble of pulling the tank and stuff. I kind of just assumed that they would have cleaned the tank. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let me show you what the fuel looked like once I investigated further. I took the Weber carburetor apart. I took it out real quick to clean it and I took it out and this was the fuel that came out of it. It was actually, it's been settled for like a day now. So not only is it super yellow and gross, but um, it's got a bunch of brown sludge at the bottom of it you can see it and that's what the carburetor looked like too so the jets were fouled up i cleaned them off and put it back together i slapped it back on just if nothing else just for a place to put it just in case i didn't get to this right away and lo and behold it runs and dries fine now except obviously this job needs to be done so i drove it up the block made sure that was the issue it was I came back and some of these larger chunks here are just um, from me storing this bucket outside. But that overall color is from the tank. And this is all the gas that was in it. This isn't even a gallon of gas right here. So it was just sucking up the sludge from the very bottom. So today, ladies and gentlemen, we're dropping that fuel tank. I did order a fuel sending unit because this truck, since I got it, um, it reads somewhat accurately until about half a tank and then it goes bloop and it's empty for half a tank. And I don't have many, very many miles on this truck, but when I do, I sure would like to use this opportunity to be able to read my fuel gauge. Give you guys a little quick look underneath. I know some of you guys are really into Shihiro. In fact, that leads me to my next thing. I wanna give a shout out to one of my buddies. His name is Evan Boyd. He's a, uh, subscriber to, a subscriber to the channel. He actually searched me out and found me on Facebook recently, and we've been uh, becoming good friends ever since. He's my friend from over uh, in Canada. He's got a bunch of these trucks, and he actually drives me crazy because he sends me these pictures all the time about how he gets these like immaculate dashes and these interiors to these trucks. He gets like SR5 steering wheels, and he gets tachometer dashes and all these fun things that you know I'm I'm really into as well. And you know we just kind of send each other pictures back and forth and have fun doing that. So anyway, man, shout out to you, Evan. Thanks for watching. Um, as promised, here's a Shihiro episode. We're gonna drop this tank right now. Enjoy. Okay, so this kind of does look new to me. You can see the difference. I mean, there's a little bit of grime to it, but it's nice and black compared to the rest of the tank. This over here, the sending unit, looks to be probably the original or outdated at least. So my thought here is they really did put a pump in here. We're about to find out for sure. It says made in Japan too. That's pretty cool. Let's see what we get. Comes right off. Gasket looks pretty new seeing this for the first time just like you guys are oh yeah good old aftermarket fuel pump 
a pretty nasty old strainer. It used to be copper. Now it's just green. So that that'll use a that'll use a good cleaning. The bottom of the lid here indicates to me that we're in we're in for a, a bit of a shock here. Oh man. Yike. Oh boy. I think something broke off of it. Holy crap. Yeah. She's pretty rotten. Just dangling by a thread here. Look at this thing. Come on, baby. Don't fall apart on me. This is going to be nasty. I'm going to go grab a light. Let's see what we get. Oh, no. Yep. That's what we're looking at. Yuck. Check this out. There's like actual debris in there. So it looks like it's salvageable. It just needs a really good cleaning. This thing is definitely a problem. But we're here and I'm gonna try to salvage it because it's not leaking or anything. Once I once I clean it out, I'll, I'll, I'll do a better in job inspecting it, and I'll make sure that there's no potential for like pinholes or anything along the seams or on the bottom, because that would definitely be an issue. Now, that being said, I do have another fuel tank that's probably in just as bad as condition, um, and it has yeah, really, really old gas in it that just smells like varnish. It's really, it's really gross. And it came from a 1979, the same year as Shihiro, um, Toyota truck that was a four-wheel drive. I don't know if it was a short bed or a long bed because I just got it in a bundle of parts like with an axle and doors and some ran random other stuff. But it was the same yellow color as my other 1979 Toyota. So I imagine it was probably a long bed, but that's just a guess. But I'm going to see if that maybe compares just for future reference or if you guys are looking around for a two-wheel drive tank and maybe can't find one, maybe a four-wheel drive tank will work. I'll drag it over here really quick and compare and contrast. So the right side is Shihiro's two-wheel drive tank, and then this would be the four-wheel drive tank. And from what I gather, it's the exact same tank. It's got the breather hose and the filler hose, just like it does over on here, same place. The mounting holes are in the same spot, and they're at kind of like an angle. And they both got what looks to be the same exact angle. They both look to be the exact same size. They've got a five-bolt deal right here for the sending unit five bolt here for the sending unit. It's got an eight bolt deal for the fuel pump right here. And it's also got an eight uh, bolt deal there as well. Mounting holes for the front are the same. See how they're kind of offset to the left? Offset to the left. I think the only difference I'm noticing is very minor is that the return line for the four-wheel drive kind of drops down on this near the side top of the tank on the four-wheel drive model and on Shihiro it's basically the same thing it's just right it's a little bit higher I guess it's like Shihiro's would be like right here yeah I think that would work so that's uh that's good information I guess you know a quick google search probably would have done the same thing but now I know for a fact and so do you guys four-wheel drive two-wheel drive they work together All right, so after probably 40 minutes of cleaning this tank, looks pretty shiny now, doesn't it? That's what we got out of the tank. 
This was part of the uh, sending unit, that little housing part that goes in the tank. I put that in there just to kind of block off one of the two holes when I was shuffling these BBs around. So if you guys have the same issue, um, I might recommend just doing what I did, or, or even uh, if you can get a replacement tank, I think you can for these for a couple hundred bucks or less. You might go that route. But I'm a cheap ass. I've spent enough money on Toyota stuff this year, so if I'm able to spend a little bit of time and clean this up, then that's what I'm going to do. After all, it's just a fuel tank. If it starts leaking, I'll deal with it again. It was pretty easy to deal with, so as long as you don't have a full tank of gas, make sure you do this when there's, when there's little to none in there. Make your life a lot better. But, uh, yeah. That's, that's after pressure washing it. This is just from the BBs. The BBs knocked all this shit loose. Also, make sure you have your uh, tetanus shot. I think I do. Looks like clear water's pooling around in there. And there are some crusty spots in there, but, um... I think it's going to do fine for now, obviously a lot better than, than what it has been doing. So what I'll do is I'll get the water out of here and then kind of let it air dry as much as possible and then probably throw some some good gasoline in there, maybe half a gallon of gasoline, slosh it around really, really good, wear gloves this time, maybe different shoes, and uh, slosh it around really good, get all that water out of there, get it mixed in with that gas and pour it, in, pour it into a can, not just on the ground. And then maybe even do that again, spend a whole gallon of it. That way there's no water in the tank. And then you should be good to go. Other things you can check are like, is this filler neck in good shape? Is the is the vent hose in good shape? This seems to be the original vent hose. And I would have a hard time believing that this is the original filler neck. But um, boy, I, I did one of these recently on a van, on, a, on like an old second gen Econoline van. And about this length right here, which is, I don't know, maybe 14, 16 inches long. It was like 50 bucks for this filler hose. So if you can salvage this, salvage this, definitely do that. We are gonna do one more thing. We're gonna blow out the lines. All right, the one bright in the sun's first. Here we go. One, two, three, four, Oh, that was really nasty. I'm gonna put some carb cleaner through those lines too. seem to help a lot this is where the pump sends the fuel so that's the first one we did just put a little bit of carb cleaner in there and then before it drains completely out even though it probably already has make this a nice tight fit and blow through this hose is uh, pretty nasty. I'm going to be cutting it a little short right here, so it's not making a great seal against my little nipple right here. But you get the picture. I don't know if this did anything at all, but it was better than nothing. It's just brake clean. So it just makes me feel a little bit better. When I put this motor together, keep in mind I have almost no miles on this engine. This was a brand new fuel filter. I mean, obviously, with all that crap in the tank, this is going to happen, but... Um, I don't remember it being this bad. I feel like this is something I would have checked, but here we are. Check your fuel filters, kids. Cool, got everywhere. Perfect. So it's been like five days. I've been waiting for that part to come in, and in the meantime, I just de I, I put this in a truck, and I was using my dehumidifier for the truck because it leaks, and I just put this in there with it. So it's mostly dry thin layer of kind of water in there, I guess, but it should be fine. There's no pooled up water whatsoever. And you can kind of see it's better than it was. 
There's no scale. It's all just surface rust now. So I did get the new part. I'll show you that right now. And we're going to go ahead and install this. These two parts onto the tank, the pump, the new part for the fuel ascending unit. And we will put this back in Shihiro. Then I get to take apart my carburetor again, clean it out. There she be. As you guys might recall, that old one was so rotted that like the body of the actual uh, part was collapsing and falling apart, turning to dust quickly. It's freaking raining. My shoes are already soaked. We're still doing this though. I don't even care. Oh my God, Alyssa, I'm sorry. You have to do so much laundry. It's mostly my fault. Oh, it's so wet under here and cold. I need to lay fully under the truck, not get hypothermia. I'm already soaking wet. These mat, these mats are doing nothing. It's so cool. Okay, there's just going to be your fuel lines right here. That's your feed line that goes to the uh, pump, and then there's this one which goes to like the top of the tank. That extra, that extra hose. And forgive me if I already said this. It's been five days, guys. I've done 10, 10 things since then. That's your power wire, the green wire in this case. And then this guy actually goes around one of the bolts that hold down your fuel pump assembly. So I've got to take that apart really quick and mount it in. Oh, this is so pleasant. So pleasant. Oh my God. And it's windy to boot too. It's like freaking so windy. <laughs> this sucks so much. Oh my god. There we go. Okay. That's on there. And then, um, I don't know if you guys can see it. Let's see here. We got this harness up here towards the back. That's going to go to my sending unit. But I got to lift the whole thing up. So I'm just going to quit talking and I'm just going to do this. Okay. I don't know. Shit, I'm going to get this in here. Come on. Drive line. The rain is literally getting worse by the second. And I'm not going to quit bitching about it because it sucks. I'm hoping I can kind of, yeah, there we go. I can kind of set this up there. It kind of sits on the drive line. That's pretty sweet. Okay, all done. Fucker's in there. Woo! All right, can you see me? I'm soaked. But it's done, so now, well, okay, it's almost done. I gotta do the filler next, and then put some gas in it, and then uh, rebuild the carburetor, and put new fuel lines on it, and put a filter on it, but um, we're almost done. That's the hard part. Hard part's done. This would be day three of actually working on the truck. But again, this is probably day six of actually like waiting on parts and all that. That's tight enough. Now, if you've got a different carb or, you know, the stock ice in carb, it's gonna be a little bit different. 
but either way there's going to be four bolts that hold it down to in this case the adapter plate or just the intake depending on your setup these happen to be a 12 mil for me but they might be like a 13 for you or whatever so um we've got to take those off but before that we've got to take things off so here's the vacuum line that goes to my distributor for my timing advance and this one's pressed on so hard that um, i'm just going to pull it from the distributor and we'll just take that with us. Here's my linkage. There should be a little clip on the bottom. See that clip right there? And mine just pulls off. Different ears will be a little different. Just pulls off. I put it right there. Then your linkage, in this case, pops right off. And then we'll take this off. I've got more clips, but because I've been working on this, I've just got the bare minimum right now just to hold the filter assembly on. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Let that go. And this hose right here, easiest way to disattach that. For me, it's just have three hands. Now, I just gotta take the whole thing off. If you're lucky like me, you've already had this apart several times recently, or there's like, you know, there's a new carburetor. And once you crack these loose, you can just twist them off with your hands. If you're unlucky, like many of my other vehicles are, they've been on there for like 40 years, and you're gonna fight every single spin. so messy in here. What are you gonna do? I clean up, it takes me all day, and then I get it like this in half a day easily. First, we've gotta take this lower filter assembly off because in order to get to the bolts for the top plate, this needs to go. In my case, these are 10 millimeter. Can't really get them with the socket because it's right up next to the throat there, in the carb. The Venturi. Okay, now we have access to all these flathead screws. There's six. On this Weber 3236. Okay, and then the last thing before we pop this up guy open is uh, on this choke assembly right here. You'll see where that little linkage arm goes, right? There's a tiny little e-clip that's supposed to go on there that of course I've lost last time I was messing with this. I've done it successfully many, many times, but this last time I just got a little little carried away and I just flung off somewhere. And it's so freaking tiny that it's you're, you're working in gravel, it's gone. So I'll have to replace that. You gotta disconnect that in order for this top plate to come off. And once that's done, it comes right off. gasket to use again. There's your floats. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean all this off. And then I'll clean out this uh, float bowl really good. And I will also be blowing out all the jets again, even though I just did this, but then I ran, I ran it. And uh, as you can see, it got pretty gross already. You can see all that nasty old gas and funk in there. And probably water apparently. So that's neat. That's not what we want. So we'll dump that out. Now we can see the carnage. It's not as bad as it was. Like I said, I just cleaned it. So I'll go ahead and clean this out and show you afterwards.
All right, so that's clean. It's pretty, it's, you know, it's pretty clean. I ended up taking the accelerator pump off. It's just these four little screws here, and there's a spring behind there, so watch out for that, and it pops right off. Clean that up because um, it had a bunch of filth and gunk in there. Um, but those two little holes right there and there. Um, we'll take some of whatever contamination's in the bowl here. So make sure to clean that out. And that goes through the carb and up, and it goes to your actual accelerator pump nozzle, which is this little, like, tube right here. And I think I got it, this is the primary, I think I got it in the primary, or I think that's where it goes, but I kind of forget if it went to this one, or you could also set it into the secondary right here. So I'm not sure how that works. I'm going to look it up and double check, but make sure you put that back the same way. There's this screw right here, and then there's actually two little um, aluminum washers on top and bottom of the nozzle, so don't lose those. Clean that out really good. Mine was actually clogged, so that might, that might have a lot to do with why this thing was running kind of weird when you accelerated. Kind of bogs down. Hopefully that's going to take care of that. I also cleaned out the the top of this. I got I got everything cleared out. I, I cleared out the inlet for the fuel and I sprayed it both ways so the needle and seat are clean, which is what the float is opening and closing. And I did the floats as well as a couple of the little orifices that are up in here for air passages and whatnot. Ideally, you'd want to use a new gasket, but this one's still in workable shape. It's not stuck anywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and use that again. There's way better videos on how to redo these guys. I understand that. I'm just, this is just how I do it. Just how the videos go. Half entertainment, half informational, I guess. I happen to have my Edelbrock carb stuff right here. So I know for a fact that they gave me a couple extra little clips. So that's what I'm talking about. It's a tiny little, tiny little clip. Just slides right on there into the middle position. That's the filter I'll be using. Sweet. Oh yeah, one more time. Here's that old gauge sending unit. It's gone. Yikes. I guess I should have used a funnel. about 80 something this is a project coming up soon I'm gonna be mounting this properly all right let's see what we got here oh it works Look at that, fuel gauge is going up. It says we have about a quarter tank or so, which is close enough to accurate. That's a uh, quarter tank, it's about five gallons. So that's good to know. Okay, you guys, so we took the tank down. We made sure that there was a new fuel pump like advertised in the fuel tank. There was. We replaced the fuel sending unit because that was roached. Um, so now it works fine, as you can see. We've inspected everything. I've blown out all the lines, the hard lines, the soft lines. We've replaced the fuel filter. We've cleaned out the carburetor again. And all in all, I think that it's 
it's gonna work out great for a while. You know, the, the tank is not in amazing shape inside, but there's no pinholes, and as long as I keep driving this thing and, you know, keep it covered and stuff, it shouldn't get any water in the tank, so it should be fine. I hope this is informational for some of you and entertaining for the rest. Hope you learned something today. Thanks for watching. Thanks for staying with us. We'll see you in the next video, okay? Peace out.